the top now. No, nothing can move you. Today is Lindsey Graham. Lindsey Graham went out on the trail with Donald Trump in his own hometown. Now, why would Donald Trump go to Lindsey Graham's hometown? He can go anywhere in South Carolina, but he went to Lindsey Graham's hometown. I believe it's Trump way of trolling him to let them know if you're not in my camp, you might not get reelected and you're not even going to be welcome in your hometown. Now, I am not a fan of Trump, but that is a freaking New York boss move, man, to go in your territory and make your enemy in your own hometown. The one up with you in your own hometown when you can't even come back to your hometown no more. That is wow. But that is exactly what happened. And uh, let's get into it. Let's get right into it. <laughs> this is hilarious. Oh, uh, gets booed by his own hometown. Damn. <laughs> it's the guts and it's the ball. The hardest tribes are Boo. Poor Lindsey Graham don't get no break. This is his hometown, man. Not his home state. I believe it's his hometown. Welcome to Pickens. Pickens, Thank y'all for coming. Welcome to Pickens, South Carolina. I want to thank y'all for coming on by now. Yep, this is the town I grew up with, and y'all got the new nerve to boo me. I don't want to put y'all on the map. If y'all didn't know who I was, y'all wouldn't even be able to come. I'm telling you. Nobody heard of Pickens. <laughs> if it wasn't for Senator Lindsey Graham, nobody would have heard his bigot white supremacism suspected. You know what? <laughs> Trump goes in his hometown and these people are booing him in his own hometown. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you all for coming. Thank you very, very much. Thank you. Thank you. Fair use. Fair use, by the way. Look at the lady in the back. <laughs> she got the thumbs down. <laughs> oh, and brother, look at this brother way back here in the back. Brother with the afro. Is that Justin? No, no, it's <laughs> Oh, God. Thanks a bunch. Well, well, you want to find something in common? <laughs> You want to find all something? All right. Thank y'all. Thank y'all. Thank y'all. Thank y'all all very coming. much. Welcome to Pickens County. A little bit about this Ooh. county. Just calm down for a second. You know, I think you'll yeah. like this. Pickens. Yeah, let me stop right there for a second. You know something? I'll be combing my beard a lot. <laughs> Trying to get that distinguished looking beard. Politicians really get me with this calm down. Respect, relax, calm down. Who the hell are you? I elected you. You ain't no different from me. You wouldn't be in that position. Let me let me keep going. County has more Medal of Honor winners per capita than any place in the nation. I was born in this county. I live 15 miles down the road. Boo. We don't this care, is bro. a place where people pay the taxes fight the wars, and tell you what they believe. Yeah, just say whatever you can to get us to stop knowing you, dude. How many of you believe that Donald Trump was a great president? You don't. <laughs> so let me tell you a little bit about me and President Trump. Mm. What happened? I found common ground with President Trump. It took a while to get there, folks. But let me tell you what happened. I come to like President Trump, Kissing and he likes life. himself, and we got that in common. You know what he didn't say? He likes me. I come to like President Trump. He likes himself. <laughs> so I like myself, whatever. The bottom line is he did not say Trump like him. I had to learn. You had to come to Trump's side. Trump didn't come on your side. You are kissing Trump behind, dude. 
and getting booed in your own hometown. These people see what you're doing. They see you brown nose and Trump because they know without Trump approval, you can't win another election, especially with those people there, because those people will rally against you. And I'm going to help him become president of the United States. Let me tell you why I want to help President Trump. I was on the front row of his presidency. And I've never seen anybody this tough for America. Say anything How many of you want. heard the phrase, we like Trump policies, but we want somebody new? Have you heard that? Well, let me tell you this. Without Donald Trump, there are no Trump policies. He did something nobody else could do. He's the most pro-life president in my lifetime. You know why he secured the border? Mexico was afraid of Donald Trump. We need him back in the White House right now. There's one man, only one man can do this. We got a Hey, you're doing a lot of butt kissing, dude. <laughs> Look, I'm not for abortions. You know me. You know, unless you're in a situation where it's life and death between you and the child, that's different. But because Chuck broke up with you and you want to get an abortion, I'm not that for I'm not that type of flow. And um, you know, it's a lot of things that I can agree on the right, and there's a lot of things I can agree with on the left, because I told you I'm not neither one of them. I'm not a lefty. I'm not a righty. I'm just me. I'm just my own individual. I have my own thoughts and I have, have my own way of thinking and doing things. And sometimes it's going to be on your side. Sometimes it's not going to be on your side. Lindsey Graham is putting himself in a position where, look, I'm not a Trump guy, <laughs> but uh, I ain't got no, you know, I ain't got no point but to be a Trump guy right now because I need your support when it comes to my time. So when, so I'm going to go support Trump because I need Trump to support me when this guy really needs to be stepping down soon. But they don't like him in his own hometown, thanks to Trump. A lot of good people running, but there's nobody our enemies are afraid of like Donald Trump. He killed the terrorists before they could kill you. Being McCoy. <laughs> I could talk all day about that, that, that strike. And if you don't think they're coming after you, you're not listening to what they're saying. Here we go with the fear I monitoring. helped him get three judges on the Supreme Court. They overruled Roe v. Wade. Oh, you did it, right? I was on the front line of the fight. Taking credit. They when Kavanaugh needed court. somebody, I was there for Kavanaugh. This Supreme Court, ladies and gentlemen, has made history, and you ought to be damn proud of it. This is the most conservative court in my lifetime because of Donald Trump. And I can promise you this, when it comes to Donald Trump, the best is yet to come. Now, you're talking about the ultimate butt kissing session. <laughs> this is it. Trump got that man with so much heated pressure on himself in his own hometown that he has to kiss Trump, but everything's going to be Trump, 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 Trump. I help Trump, Trump without me, Trump without me, Trump without Trump, me without Trump, me. Oh, the same old bullcrap rhyme. He is in a hot seat right now. And this is the masterful uh, manipulation of Donald Trump. And I, I, I'm like I said, I got to get credit where credit is due because this is masterful. I'm going to go in your own hometown and I'm going to hold a rally and I'm going to hold a big one. And I will determine whether these people are going to side with you or not. That is a uh, that is a type of uh, new breed of cool. You know, <laughs> you know, it's like I'm going to take what what you hold for yourself and make it mine. Because that's exactly what Trump is doing right here. Now he got him in a hot seat where he got to do nothing but kiss Trump behind. He can't say nothing against Trump right now. Not in this position. Not in this position. Not in his hometown. He have to say everything good about Trump and nothing negative. So let me tell you how you win an election, folks. 
You get people together that don't agree all the time to agree on the most important things. It's still boring. My hope is we can bring this party together because he's going to be our nominee. He will be the nominee of the Republican Party. And let me tell you what's at stake. If they win in 2024, they're going to pack the Supreme Court. So we need to get off our butts and make sure Donald Trump wins. If they win in 2024, they'll be Puerto Rico and D.C. will be states for Democrats for the rest of our lifetime. They'll abolish the Electoral College. They will turn this nation upside down. So there's one person. So he's spitting bigotry. He's spitting racism. He's spitting um, xenophobia right now in this session. Let me uh, back it up a little bit. They'll abolish the Electoral College. They will Rico and D.C. will be states for Democrats. For What's wrong with Puerto Rico and D.C. being states? We already colonized them. They're already part of our territory. We already used them for votes. So why shouldn't they be states? Anyway, that's just my point. For the rest of our lifetime, they'll abolish the Electoral College. Nobody's abolishing the Electoral College, dude. That's not just going to happen. That's fear mongering. They will turn this nation upside down. Like the Republicans are not turning this nation up down. Both of y'all are turning this nation upside down, dude. So there's one person running for president as a Republican that has the ability to change this country. It is Donald J. Trump. He did it once. You. He can do it again. And I'm going to help him all over this country. And folks, I am from South Carolina. He is going to win South Carolina. This is the pathway to the presidency. God bless you all. God bless President Trump. God bless America. He's still booing him. <laughs> He's still booing him. After all that talk, nobody heard nothing what Lindsey Graham said, and they still booed his behind. Boo, 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 as he walked off. <laughs> this is hilarious. And, and Trump tried to say to do, you know, Trump tried to say to do. Watch. <laughs> Trump tried to say this, man. <laughs> Twice this week, as an example, that Russia is losing the war to Iraq. Twice. Now, you know, you can make mistakes on occasion. Even Lindsey down here, Senator Lindsey Graham. We love <laughs> Senator Graham. We're gonna act. We're gonna. Man, that's cold, man. I made you my bitch. My bitch. <laughs> that's cold. You gonna talk about Biden? Then you gonna talk about instead of talking great about Lindsey, you gonna say even Senator Lindsey Graham makes a mistake. His big mistake was going against me. That's what he's basically saying. But we gonna let it go right now. We gonna let you on our side. You on the right side. Either you gonna be on our side or you gonna be on the other side of us. Either way, it's your choice. Come on this side. We'll forgive you. You push for me. We're gonna be fine. But if you get on the other side of me, it's gonna be a problem for you. <laughs> Why would he embarrass this dude like this? love him. Oh, we're gonna, we're love, gonna him. love him. We're gonna love him. I know. It's half and half. But when I need some of those liberal <laughs> votes, he's always there to help me get them, okay? <laughs> we got some pretty liberal people, but he's good. He's good. We know the good ones. We know the bad ones, too. We got some real bad ones. Hey, look, this dude is a, 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 a psychopathic, sick, psychopathic sick of fan he's a narcissist just no different from hillary clinton something like that but the, the thing about trump is is he's a he's hilarious with his crap and you got to watch yourself because that part will get you you know because he, he he could find humor in some of the dumbest stuff and um sometimes he don't take things seriously and some things he take too seriously and uh you're like over here you need to not play around over here but over here you play too much man stop playing over here he's playing too much He's going to embarrass this guy in his own hometown. Talking about, ah, we'll forgive him. I mean, half and half, we, we, yeah, it's going to be okay. <laughs> but even he makes mistakes on occasion. But you can't make a mistake by calling Ukraine Iraq. 
And then you certainly can't do it a second time because there's something wrong. With the help of everyone here today, we're going to win the South Carolina primary seven months from now. Big. And on Election Day 2024, we're going to evict. We are going to evict crooked Joe Biden from the White now look, let me come off this uh, quick, real quick. Look, um, Trump is going to win South Carolina. There's no way Joe Biden wins in South Carolina. Trump's going to win South Carolina. That's just the bottom line. Joe Biden's not going to win. Now I'm going to do a segment on how they can ditch, how the DNC may ditch. They may ditch Joe Biden for RFK with some caveats to it. Now, I'm going to talk about that later on this week. But in this case, Trump know exactly what I'm going, what he's doing. I'm going to go to your hometown and I'm old rallies. And you're going to either come there and dig me up or I'm going to be there and put you down. But you're going to come. Either way, it's your choice. Yeah, now, bygones be bygones, past the past, how y'all treat me is in the past. It's now. Either you're going to be on my side or you're going to be against me, and I'm going to start with your hometown. That is that To me, that is genius strategy to get people to campaign for you. Second, Lindsey Graham is, no, is in no position right now because he is horrible on his failed policies. He goes down to Ukraine, and he's going to do this mess. And right now, the Russian government has a warning sign, a wanted sign out for this Negro. They want him in jail. Russia wants Lindsey Graham in jail just for the simple fact of aiding and abetting and confessing the murder of Russians. And they are right in that aspect. You go around talking about Russians are being killed and how you're happy to uh, spend the money to have them killed. Why wouldn't Russia want to have a warrant out for your arrest for you to <laughs> and see these are the things that can cause a world war war i wouldn't go to war with no lindsey ground look you don't want to run your m- money you don't want to got yourself out there like that looking like an idiot you need if they get you they get you but this is what he had to say when he went to see um uh the ukrainian president yeah we have we, we, we have i think just so many thank you very much thanks United States people of, of the United States for all big support. President Biden, bipartisan yes. support, Congress, and really we thank you so much. Bipartisan. Free or die. Free or die. Bipartisan support. Thank you, President Trump. This psychopathic maniac is president of Ukraine. Y'all, hey, yo, black people out here with these doggone flags, how about support Ukraine? You don't you don't even know the history. Uh, Russia, Crimea, and the whole thing with Ukraine. You don't you, you don't even take the time to study out. You just vote. Jamal Bowman don't even know what he's sending money for. Don't know the history or the story behind the territory, uh, uh, um, the war between Russia and, and Ukraine and the property that's in play, the territory that's in play. And don't even take time to study. I am still studying this because it's fascinating, especially dealing with the um, beautiful region, and it's a beautiful region of Crimea. And the fight for that area. It's like two kids fighting over a toy, and the toy don't even belong to you, it's belong to them. We, we'll talk about that later. Most people don't know this. And black people up there putting Ukrainian flags, support Ukraine, whatever the Democrat tell, whatever the Democratic Party do, black people sitting up there doing, doing it. Black people, you need to stop that. And I'm not telling you to do what the Republicans, you need to do what you do. You need to be focusing on your community. Now, let me get off that because y'all know how I feel about that. Lindsey Graham talking with this psychopathic, bigot president. Now you are free. Yes. And we will be. And the Russians are done. The The Russians are done. Thank you so much. And the Russians are dying. The best money we have ever spent. Not reinvesting in America, not paying black people the reparations that we're oh, we always get a uh, stupid talk coming from this fool. Always getting anti-black, anti-equality talk with this guy. But he go over there and say, best money we ever spent. The nerves of you. And any of you black South Carolinians 
supporting this guy, you out your dog on mine. And then you black black South Carolina reporting supporting Tim Scott or James Clyburn, you're out of your mind because he supports it. This is a bipartisan effort of money being funded to these people to kill Russians. And not only Lindsey Graham need to go to jail, Clyburn need to go to jail too. Well, let me keep going. You know, we're on four. Let's see. This is it makes oh, life possible. Yeah. Now they cut that part out. He probably was saying this is the fourth installment of billions we send in y'all. We got to defend our people of our better selves in America. That there was a time in America that we were. <laughs> so you're very well. Yeah, we has. We got him. He got a Ukrainian pin on. Him. Oh, oh, kiss up. Which So he's doing a speech with some prop setups of some tankers, I guess Russian tankers with flowers in it. Most of those people in that region want peace. They don't want war. It's these oligarchs who's trying to take claim of territory that they can properly, properly um, invest money in to beautify these territories to attract tourists, especially Crimea. Beautiful um, um, town of the water. All for tourism. All because they want to make that a hot place to go to. But that's my personal opinion. That's what I believe, you know. And long as it's not in their hands, they can't do it. And he got Lindsey Graham kissing they behind up. Kissing behind. The industrial level war crimes that have been committed against the Ukrainian people, if they are forgiven in the name of peace, you'll have destroyed everything we've stood for since the end of World War II. Now here this psychopathic maniac saying no peace. If you go the way of peace, you're going the wrong way. Let's go back and listen to what this fool just said. If they are forgiven in the name of crimes that have been committed I have crimes. The industrial level war crimes that have been committed against the Ukrainian people. Industrial level of war crime. Like they're not doing the industrial, uh, industrial level of war crime against the Russians that are in Ukraine. Because Russia is a mixture of people. I mean, Ukraine is a mixture of people. A lot of them Russian speaking uh, Ukrainians. If they are forgiven in the. Russia allowed these people to have their independence. They could have crushed them, but he allowed them to have their independence. All they said was, "Don't go, don't, don't, don't come over here. This is ours. You can, you can have your independence. This is yours." But no, you want that too, and you willing to risk life and death for it. And here's Lindsey Graham talking about the level of the name of peace. You'll have destroyed. Everything we've stood for since the end of World War II. In other words, if you talk about peace here, you would you be spitting on everything that we've done since World War II. Well, taking over territories, trying to control governments, taking out their leaders, putting in puppet puppet leaders. You see some resources, you want to take that for your own financial gain. You see a territory, you want to take that for some kind of financial gain. Get out of here. Give me a moment. There can be no forgiving and forgetting when it comes to Putin's war crimes. You hear this fool? There can be no forgiving or forgetting for Putin war crime, but you committed war crimes. Half of Congre Congress committed war crimes. 
Heck, our last five presidents committed war crimes. Well, I don't say think I don't put Jimmy Carter in the, in the bunch, but uh, we've committed war crimes. How are you going to point the finger on somebody committing war crimes and not at yourself? What war crimes? We had a deal. They had a deal. They had a NATO deal. And then you're going to poke that deal in the face. Okay, we're we going to test you and see if you're going to keep your word on the deal. And you'll keep your word on the deal and you'll expect them to try to uh, push back on this thing. And they're a war criminal if they decide to push back and say, we had a deal and I'm going to keep my end of the deal. You come over here, we're going to have some problems. It's war maniac. This is war hawk. There can be no backing off of helping Ukraine because if we fail here, there goes Taiwan. What Taiwan got to do with it? <laughs> anyway, well, they said there's some kind of link to that, that if, if we, if we, if we allow this aggression to happen, the, the same aggression is going to happen from China to Taiwan. Get out of here with this mess. This psychopathic war mongering maniac, Lindsey Graham, is basically saying we ain't have no peace. And we, the people, need to say we're going to have peace. And we have to pe get, get your behind out of there. Peace is coming. And they want to continue. See, if Trump get in office, Lindsey Graham will be in his ear to continue to push this. But y'all think Trump is going to fight against, going to stop the war in Ukraine. Now, Trump said he's going to stop it. First thing he's going to do is stop it. But how are you going to stop it, Lindsey, when you're kissing his butt at his rallies? Did you mention any of that stuff in the rallies? On uh, future uh, Ukraine membership and specifically on the inviting. Uh... If you're running for president as a Republican or Democrat, I don't know how you can make the argument that we're stronger against China if we pull the plug on Ukraine. That makes zero sense. See, Lindsey, this is the type of person, he'll take a test run with Ukraine to see if we can do a test run with China. And he's trying to link China and Ukraine together, Ukraine and Russia, China and Taiwan. Like they're the same deal, like, this ain't the same deal, number one. Number two, his whole thing is, this is just beginning. I want China. I want to go to war with China. We don't need to be going to war with anybody. That's why these maniacs got to go. This psychopathic fool right here got to go. He don't need to be in office. Y'all need to vote his behind out of office. But you're not. What I want the Chinese to see is that invading a neighbor is not as easy as it looks. Putin has an arrest warrant from the International Criminal Court. Well, the International Criminal Court ain't jack. And Putin got an arrest warrant for you. And the International Criminal Court need to have arrest warrants on all four of our presidents. Because we've done no different. We invaded countries. We just came up with lame excuses to invade we even bypassed Congress to invade these countries. Matter of fact, we've got proxy wars all over the world. And this guy right here is trying to say, look, we, 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 this is a test run. If our money can be proved to put a win against Russia, it can be proved when we go to fight China. And folks, we don't need none of our money going to none of this stuff because this ain't got nothing to do with us. China invading Taiwan ain't got nothing to do with us. And, by, and same thing with Russia invading Ukraine or Ukraine invading um, Russia. Pushing up on Russian territory. I'd like to do more to help prosecute Russian war crimes. The best way to protect... How about you do something to prosecute American war crimes? Taiwan and world order is for Putin to lose. And if you don't get that, I think you're missing a lot. Given that the leading candidate yeah. is... The F-16 will matter. It is not a magic weapon. But combined with other weapons, it will be decisive. So my message 
to the Biden administration is I appreciate what you have done. You need to do more. And I am convinced that there will be bipartisan support to provide more weapons that can turn the tide of battle in the upcoming counteroffensive. All right, so I'm done with this maniac. Before we go any further, let me say in closing on this thing. This is three prong. You want to show your American power, which which just make us bullies in the world. People in the world don't like us because stupid stuff like this. We always got to interfere in other people's mess. We claim we're doing it for the protection and the sanctity of these people in this region when there's people in both regions also. We're trying to feed the military complex with more weapons, more weapons, and we're telling we're telling the taxpayers, you and me, that we're going to get money out your behind and we're going to finance these wars. We need more weapons. We need to send more money. We know, and the money is coming right back to America, to the military industrial complex. It's not coming back to you. They're taking your money, giving it to buy weapons to send the Ukraine for them to fight. Where is your return on this? The people that profiting, that's profiting is the gun manufacturers, the ship manufacturers, and they're not even using ships. They're using tanks and aircraft manufacturers. These people are so hungry for war. Lindsey Graham need to be locked up. He is a warmonger. He is egging on a war. This is not just, oh, an invasion. This is a war, a war between Ukraine and Russia. And we're financing it. We're facilitating it. And this is not right. But this is, we don't supposed to be doing that. Now, I start off this whole thing with Lindsey Graham is going out there to campaign for Trump because he wants Trump to be president so he could try to fa facilitate with Trump for more of these wars. But it don't matter what Lindsey Graham, whether Trump's president or Biden's president again, again, it's still going to get facilitated because we financing the war that we shouldn't be financing anymore. And then we got numb nuts like him going on talking about it's the best money we've ever spent. Yeah, we got homeless veterans in this country. Black people haven't gotten a full equality, especially financially. You got a border crisis that I kind of lean on him on his on the Republican side when it comes to the border crisis, uh, because I don't think people need to be coming in here like they're coming in here now. Now there need to be some safeguards. I'm not saying people shouldn't come to America. Uh but I'm just saying how they coming in and how fast they coming in and who are we uh, particularly um, caring for more than the other ones, migrant workers from South America and stuff like that. They have more preferential treatment than anybody else coming from uh, Africa or Europe or something like that, or even the Car Car Caribbean. But Lindsey Graham being Trump punked by Trump, And going to continue to get pumped by Trump. And he's kissing all this behind. Why? Because it doesn't matter who's in office. He preferred Trump. But he needs somebody to side with him to keep doing this stupid mess. 